During the intervening period, government also noticed several actors, political and civil society, who weighed in on the matter with some views. And we note sections of the Ghanaian community that have preferred well-meant suggestions. Our view is that when your nation is at the crossroads, you back it, you wish it well, and you support it. We also note in particular the opposition NDC that has only sought to make political capital out of this with the hopes that it will inure to their parochial benefit. They have consistently made efforts to pitch Ghana against foreign investors, and this is not the first time. In the FT transaction, they sought to report the sovereign state to the U.S. government with hopes that the U.S. government will investigate and maybe sanction the Ghanaian authorities. They failed. In the Sino-Hydro transaction, they sought to get the IMF to scuttle the transaction. They failed. In this particular transaction, you'll recall that they were quick to seek to get the U.S. government to take over the inquiry and literally push Ghana on where to go. Initially, they claimed that this was because conditions precedent had been changed to conditions subsequent. And that is why due diligence wasn't properly done. This has been proven over time to be mere propaganda and a palpable untruth, and it will not wash. The NDC distortions that the Akufuado government conspired to bend the rules for PDS have also clearly been exposed by the record of events. For the avoidance of doubt, government reiterates that neither the government nor the president has had any interest in PDS. PDS is a consortium that was created by the company known as Miralco, which was the successful bidder in the selection process. Government or its assigns did not form PDS. Miralco was selected through an international competitive process supervised by agencies including the MCC, which process was initiated in 2016. And we have the view that this attempt to distort facts will not wash. While the NDC seeks to always tag this transaction as corrupt, they have never been able to adduce one piece of cogent evidence to back this claim. The evidence, rather, is that the Akufuado administration is the one which, through due diligence, discovered the suspected breach and has proceeded to act to preserve national assets. And again, any propaganda to the contrary will not wash.